welcome and uh, good evening to all of you i hope everyone is staying happy healthy and in high spirits and uh, before i start i really appreciate for your uh, patience waiting there was a little technical issue which i think uh, we have overcome and we have sorted that issue so uh, good evening to all my dear friends and my uh, fellow friends just uh, right so welcome to all of you in today's session welcome uh, dr alpna rishi lakesh arjun dinesh welcome everyone guys i request all of you to please notify me about the audio video thing is everything okay so that we can start today's session So guys can we start please let me know everything is okay now the screen is okay so the screen is okay now i hope right thank you dr babu and uh, fans to thank you monica thank you thank you dr imranal huda okay so let's start today we are going to just discuss about the very basic part of the ecg and uh, in the other upcoming session we will go in the depth of every detail of the ecg today is an introductory class right so i request all of you to please stick to the basic things over here why we have kept this class the fundamental is very clear so if we are very well aware of the basic pathophysiology or the physiological functions of the heart and how the ecg is being represented upon the paper only then we are going to make a quick diagnosis from the ecg or we will be able to interpret the ecg in a better manner or in a better fashion right uh, okay i don't know what is this problem going on so let's start with a very basic thing what is, is this ecg right now ecg is basically as it is written upon your screen it is the recording of the electrical activity of the heart on a graphic paper or in other words we can say it is the graphic representation of the electrical activity of the heart now before we proceed further there are two basic things that we need to understand that what happens my dear friend when there is a contraction what happens whenever there is a contraction this is also called as depolarization and due to this contraction the blood gets ejected from the heart and it goes into either into the aorta or either into the pulmonary vein and this phase is called as a systole phase now because of this impulses there is also a phase which is called as the relaxation of the cardiac muscles and this relaxation is also known as or better known as what beta it is known as repolarization right i hope now the video is not lagging yes or no please do confirm me guys about the video thing 
इज इट लैगिंग और नॉट I don't know why it is happening so okay guys i think uh, now we have definitely overcome with this problem of uh, audio video thing so Guys, now can you please confirm me? Is everything okay? I think we have overcome with this problem now. The video is not lagging. So, with all due respect to you, and I really appreciate your patience waiting to overcome with this technical issue. I request all of you to please write me and confirm me, notify me in the chat box about the audio video thing. Is everything okay now? I think we have completely uh, sorted out this problem. I am waiting for your replies.
so guys can we resume back please notify me So guys, uh, let's restart this class from the starting. So we know what does this ECG mean? This ECG means basically, my dear friend, that this is the electrical representation, or as written upon this paper, that it is the recording of the electrical activity of the heart on a of the heart on a graphic paper, right? So that means this is the definition of the ECG, right? Uh, I really apologize for all this, uh, you know, uh, delay due to these technical issues. Now, the first very important part to understand this is that what is called as the contraction of the heart. This contraction is also known as the depolarization of the heart. And what happens in this depolarization? Basically, my dear friend, the systole occurs over there, right? And due to this systole, the blood gets ejected to the aorta and to the pulmonary veins. We know this thing very well. So I'm just going to take the basics of this thing today. So that if we have the basics fundamentals clear about the ECG only then we are going to make a good diagnosis or we can make best out of the ECG, right? And now the other thing which we need to learn is the repolarization. So in simple language, what is repolarization? Repolarization is basically the relaxation of the cardiac muscles that we have to understand. Now guys, this is basically what is this which I wanted to make sure over here that this is the wiring diagram of the heart right so what is this wiring diagram of the heart what does this represents over here now this wiring diagram of the heart is representing basically what beta over here that over here we do have one thing that is called as SA node over here right and then we do have another thing which is called as AV node AV means atrioventricular node we do have then we do have a bundle of his and then bundle of his further extends to right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block and then they get segregated into what it gets segregated into the Purkinje fibers right we all know this thing this is not a new thing which we are going to discuss but yes one thing i wanted to make a very thing uh, clear over here that this sa node this particularly sa node and av node we can divide the parts of the heart into two main important parts. One important part will be a specialized part for impulses and one will be the contractile part of the heart. How we have to segregate this thing? Simply my dear friend, that SA node and AV node, they are specialized part of the myocardium. What are they? This SA node and AV node, they are specialized part of, I am just writing over here, specialized part of the myocardium. Right now, why they are the specialized part of the myocardium? Let's understand this thing. We know this that this SA node, this SA node, what is having? This SA node is having a speciality, and what speciality it does have? It does have a speciality of generating speciality of generating. very high rate very high rate of impulses 
and particularly my dear friend these impulses are produced spontaneously so put your pens down and let's understand how these are produced and how they are seen over here as they note is producing maximum of the impulses and it is conducting at a very higher rate and a very higher speed and the impulses are generating very spontaneously what is happening my dear friend it is getting a very high spontaneous impulses so in other words which point i wanted to make over here if someone ask you that which part of the herd has the maximum automaticity it means this sa node has the maximum automaticity now what do i mean by automaticity automaticity means which can generate or which can produce impulses without any external effort or without any external device or help so sa node is just producing with the help of our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system so the impulses are being generated or started from the sa node we are very clear over this thing then comes about the av node what we are going to talk about then we are going to talk about the av node now this av node it also produces conductions this av node it also produces conduction now but it has to produce the conduction at a slower rate so it has a slow conduction now let's talk about why this av node has a slower conduction or it produces a slow conduction over here now just look at this over here now this av means a means atrio ventricular atrio ventricular now this av node is producing slow conduction so that it can hold the electrical impulses or electrical activity at this junction beta which junction at this junction why it has to hold the electrical impulses or electrical activity at this junction so that this part which part beta this atrial part can contract properly and blood can get shift from the atria to the ventricle we know due to the shifting or the contraction of the uh, atria the blood gets shifted from the atria to the ventricle this is the basic physiological thing which we need to uh, keep it in mind always that av node has a slow conduction right or generation of the impulses are at a slower rate as compared to sa node basic funda is this that it has to hold these electrical impulses so that the atria can contract well and the blood can get shift or um, the atria can contract properly and ventricles can get filled up fill the blood got my point okay then let's talk about bundle of hays now they are specialized in producing the fast conduction now these bundle of hays basically they are specialized in producing the fast conductions now why they are specialized in fast conduction so that both these ventricles which beta both these ventricles can contract spontaneously at the same time so both these why this bundle of his has a fast contraction as comparative to av node so this ventricle can contract properly at a similar time both right and the left can contract at a similar time okay now based upon this basic discussion now you can basically segregate one thing that you can divide this myocardium whole myocardium into two parts so you can divide this myocardium into two parts now how you can segregate one you can segregate it into a specialized myocardium specialized myocardium and on the other hand you can segregate this or you can divide this into a contractile myocardium into a contractile myocardium now what do i mean to say when i am saying this specialized myocardium and contractile myocardium right now this specialized myocardium has basically components like sa node av node and it has bundle of his right and this contractile myocardium has things like what beta it has things ha ji it has the things like atrial myocardium atrial myocardium and it has ventricular myocardium ventricular myocardium 
why we have segregated into specialized myocardium and this um, uh, contractile myocardium let's make this funda very clear over here when we talk about the specialized myocardium it has an activity or it has a property of producing maximum electrical impulses it can produce maximum electrical impulses electrical impulses right as we have just discussed that this sa node it has the highest power or it can produce impulses spontaneously as do remember this thing as sa node sa spontaneous right so it can produce maximum impulses and it can produce a spontaneous impulses my dear and it has a maximum automaticity automaticity do remember this point that this av node has a slow conduction the reason we have explained because it gives some time to contract the atria and to the shift of the blood from atria to the ventricles right and then we have bundle of his and prakanje fiber they have prakanje fiber system they have fast contraction what do we have the beta they have fast contraction why do we have this fast contractions over here or fast impulses over here in bundle of his or prakanje fiber so that both the ventricles can contract at the same given time right now let's talk about this contractile myocardium right now these contractile myocardium are why they are also called as specialized myocardium this fundamental is very clear that despite irrespective of this electrical activity one they are receiving this electrical activity they do have a property of electrical activity right then my dear friend electrical activity they can also contract they can also contract right so do remember these basic funders because now we are going to discuss about the components of the ecg where they are going to help us in understanding the concept over here so let me uh, show you a video also right now look at in this video over here so this is an sa node sa node is contracting right and now you see over here that here there are the impulses which are getting generated and then this impulse is going into the av node av node is holding a current for some time and in this meanwhile what is happening my dear friend that here the atria is contracting now you can see the atria is contracting and then this impulse is leading further to av bundle or bundle of his meanwhile the blood is getting shifted from the atria to the ventricle and when this is going into the right or the left branches or to the rest of the prakanje fiber then ventricle is getting contracted and then some ecg is being generated so this pqrst is coming over here so we have this basic knowledge over here so let's learn about some of the components of the ecgs now let's learn about the some components of the ecgs right okay any questions till now haan ji is everything clear right okay so the first very component that we have to learn that there are segments like what segments we do have as in the picture it is shown we do have a p q r s n t so main segments are p q r s n t right oh, sorry waves waves right waves are p q r s n t these all are the waves now why these all are called as waves and why they are happening over here means p is signifying something q is signifying something r is signifying something s and t is also signifying something 
in between these things there is a thing which is called as interval and we do have some segments over there so what we are going to discuss about this thing right okay so the first very important thing before we start over here is this that what is the rhythm what is rhythm of the heart what is the rhythm of the heart yes i am waiting for your replies can you please tell me what is the rhythm what is the rhythm हाँ जी वट इज रिदम सो बेसिकली माई डियर फ्रेंड रिदम ऑफ द हर्ट इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज रिदम इज द पार्ट ऑफ द हर्ट सो इट्स बेसिकली इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ हर्ट विच कंट्रोल्स द सीक्वेंस ऑफ electrical activity it controls what whether it controls the sequence of the electrical activity do remember this thing from where does this rhythm starts han ji from where does this rhythm starts it starts with s a node it starts with what beta it starts with a s a node this is the basic thing we have to learn over here so rhythm is what basically it is the sequential electrical activity which is being controlled right and it starts with a sa node now if it is starting with a sa node so it means it is going to generate some electrical activity right and on ecg i have told you in the starting that what does this ecg means this ecg means that it is the recording of the electrical activity on a graphic paper so it means whenever there is some electrical activity and it is going to start from the sa node means that impulse which is being generated as a sa node it is going to give some wave over there right so and secondly whenever there is a contraction or electrical activity in the sa node what it is going to lead it is going to lead to the atrial contraction we are very clear so we have learned three things what we have learned first of all that rhythm starts with sa node when the rhythm starts there is a wave which is called as the p wave what wave beta this p wave is going to come over here so this p wave is going to come over here so whenever you say see a p wave think of atrial contraction what you can think of atrial contraction right do remember this thing very simplified over here and you have to think of the rhythm also you have to think of the rhythm also then after p what you have to define over here you have a qrs complex what you have beta you have a qrs so here is qrs complex right this qrs always do remember it comes all together so today's class is just about the basic thing in the upcoming classes we are going to discuss about each and everything in detail right so guys stick to the thing which we are going to discuss today right try not to jump i know you are expert of ecg but sometimes it is good to revise the ecg right then we have qrs complex right now why is this qrs complex happens over here now in the video we have seen after atrial contraction what happens my dear friend there is ventricular depolarization what happens beta there is ventricular depolarization ventricular depolarization right then apart from qrs there is a t wave also now the ventricular has depolarized what is going to happen which phase is going to start ventricular repolarization ventricular repolarization so what we have now we have a ventricular repolarization or we can say there is a time when the ventricles are getting relaxed blood is getting filled up that is being signified by the t wave upon the ecg we are very clear about this thing so let's quickly revise about the thing what we have discussed till now we have discussed what is the rhythm 
rhythm is basically the part of the heart which control the electrical or sequence of the electrical activity from where does it starts it starts with the sa node and what does p means p means atrial contraction or the rhythm of the heart then we have qrs segment it tells us about the ventricular depolarization then we have ventricular repolarization right now you must be wondering that sir that atrial contraction is occurring over here and ventricular depolarization is occurring over here there is some time taken between by the impulses or the electric uh, impulses to travel from the atria to the ventricles who is going to signify this thing so it's very simple to understand this thing so the time taken to travel between the atria and the ventricle it is being signified by the pr here it is our pr interval kahan hai bachche pr interval is here right so what is this pr interval basically let's quickly write down pr interval right it's the time taken it's the time taken between sa node to reach av node right so it is the time between the sa node and the av node another point do remember this thing that first atrial contraction occurs then ventricular contraction occurs after let's say 0.8 second milli seconds do remember this point also right now we are left with one other important segment that is called as what beta that is called as st segment st segment now let's see where is this st segment here is this st segment over here where is this st segment this is the st segment from the start of the from the end of the s to the start of the t wave this is called as the st segment so what is this st segment do remember my dear friend that this st segment it is the time between it is the time between end of ventricular depolarization it is the time between the end of ventricular depolarization to the start of ventricular repolarization now i think we are very clear about the ecg that how much time is being taken and according to the impulse travel what are the waves or what are the lines which are being produced upon the ecg paper right so let's quickly revise this thing then we have okay before revision let's talk about the tt is for ventricular repolarization or relaxation we have discussed this earlier also now we are left with one another wave you must be wondering over here that sir what is this this is called as what beta this is called as a u wave what is this called as this is called as u wave so i ask you a question is it a normal uh, thing to be seen uh, u wave or not ha ji guys is it normal guys or not normal having a u wave in the ecg is normal or not normal so guys let's talk specifically about u wave also now right now in a case where this u wave is following if u wave u wave follows a normal t wave a normal t wave right then what does it means it's normal it's a normal thing right it's a normal thing but if you find that the t wave is not present if the t wave is having any abnormality or let's say there is a flat t wave but 
despite of the flat t wave there is a u wave then it is always abnormal do remember this thing what i am saying over here is this if this u wave if this u wave follows a flat t wave a flat t wave right it's always pathological it's always pathological it's always what beta it's always pathological now why it is always pathological and what does it signifies if it is pathological right so it means there is some papillary muscle dysfunction do remember this thing there is a papillary muscle dysfunction one thing is very clear that there is a papillary muscle dysfunction or second my dear friend there can be an electrolyte imbalance what can be there there can be an electrolyte imbalance so there are the two main important causes of a pathological u wave if it is following a t wave do remember this thing so now let's quickly revise what we have done till now that we have discussed about all the important things of the ecg that i am going to take it from the uh, wiring diagram of the heart first we have discussed about the basic wiring diagram of the heart what was it from where the impulse was starting the impulse was starting from the si node and it was traveling to the av node and then it was going into the bundle of his then reaching the prakanjay fiber and due to this impulses we have segregated upon their specialized features so what is the specialized feature of the si node it has a speciality of generating very high rate of impulses and that high rates are basically spontaneous pulses av node is specialized in slow conduction the reason best known to us what is that reason beta that it needs the atria it have to give some time to the atria to contract and the blood to shift from the atria to the ventricle right and then we have segregated this myocardium into two parts one was specialized myocardium and one was the contractile myocardium specialized myocardium means the part of the myocardium which has the maximum electrical impulses right like si node av node bundle of his prakanje system or prakanje fibers although among all of them the si node has the maximum capacity or maximum potential to produce the impulses and spontaneous impulses do remember this thing av node has a slow conduction then afterwards the prakanje fibers has the fast contractions so that the ventricles can contract at a same given time right contractile myocardium like two parts atrial myocardium and ventricular myocardium why we say it as a contractile myocardium because it has two properties the first very property it has the electrical activity and because of that electrical activity the atria and the ventricle can contract properly now because of these contractions basically or because of these you know electrical impulses we can record some electrical activity upon a graphic paper and that graphic paper with electrical activity of the heart is called as ecg when you are going to read the graph of the ecg you are going to encounter some wave some interval some segments so waves what we call it as p wave q r s waves right t wave or sometimes we also encounter a u wave we have one interval that is called as p r interval right q t interval and s t segment is there we discussed about the rhythm what is the rhythm this is the part of the heart which basically controls the sequential electrical activity where does this rhythm start it starts with the si node and with this we are going to enter into the p wave p wave means what is happening p wave means the si node is starting the impulse and because of that impulse what happens in physiological level the atria starts contracting what happens beta atria start contracting so we have simplified over here that if there is any abnormality of the p wave where will be the problem in the atria or maybe there is a problem with the sa node now qrs qrs right now before we discuss about qrs i think it's better to discuss about the pr so whenever the rhythm is starting it will take some time from the sa node to the to reach the 
AV node. So PR interval is going to signify or it is going to tell us about the time taken between the SA node and the AV node. Once the electrical impulse has reached at the AV node, then my dear friend, after that, the QRS will get formed, right? In the initial thing, the Q will get formed in the starting phase of the ventricular depolarization in the mid of R is getting formed and in the last phase of the ventricular depolarization S is being formed. So QRS means what beta? Means ventricular depolarization. Then after QRS, you can easily calculate with this ST segment. What is this ST segment? This ST segment is the time between the ventricular depolarization to the start of the ventricular repolarization. As I just told you that this S over here that this S in the ECG is the last phase of the ventricular depolarization. After a uh, end of the depolarization, it will take a little bit of time to get relaxed and that relaxation time will be uh, represented by the ST segment. Then in the end, we will have ventricular repolarization. T wave means what better? Ventricular repolarization. We have also discussed about a wave which is basically seen and now from examination point of view, this wave is also important that is called as what wave U wave. If U wave is following a normal T wave, do remember this thing that if you see PQRS and T, a normal T wave after a T wave, you are seeing a U wave, consider it normal. But if you don't find any T wave and you find that there is a flat T wave, then it is always pathological. In the options, you will have an option of papillary muscle dysfunction or maybe in the question, you will find that there is some potassium or sodium particularly or maybe calcium abnormalities. Do remember this thing, electrolyte imbalance, U wave, papillary muscle dysfunction, U wave. Right? Okay. Now, Let's proceed further. Any queries, any questions, guys, till now? Okay. So let's talk about the some time and speed of this ECG machine. Time and speed of this ECG machine. Do remember this thing that ECG machine draws. Just a second, guys. What is the question? My question to you is this, that ECG machine draws how many boxes, how many boxes in a minute? in a minute Hanji. or let me make it a very simplified question how many boxes are being taken by the ecg machine in one minute time let's calculate this now we will discuss this in the end so let's do a little bit of mathematics over here what mathematics we have to do is this just look at this paper over here and you just have to remember this one simple funda over here that this ECG machine is basically running at the speed of standard speed of 25 millimeter per second. Globally, it is acceptable, right? Kitna rate has the ECG machine ka chalne ka beta? 25 millimeter per second. And it uses a standard paper. I have shown this in this, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 diagram that this everywhere you go, any part of the world, we will have a standardized paper and with a standardized scare boxes of this paper. Now, just put your pens down for a moment and please focus over here that if you look, you will find that there are two type of boxes over here. What are these two type of boxes? One, we have a small boxes over here. I'm just going to take multicolor approach so that you can easily learn that what are these small boxes over here. Right. Look at here, we do have small boxes over here. 
how many small boxes and these small boxes all together they are going to make one big box over here now look at here let's calculate that there is a one big box and in one big box how many small boxes are there one two three four five amazing now that there are how many boxes beta small boxes how many small boxes five small boxes in how many big boxes in one big box right or in easy language we can say that one big box has how many small boxes five small boxes i repeat it's a simple simple mathematics you have to learn over here right that what is the mathematics first you have to remember the speed of the ecg what is the speed of the ecg machine beta the speed of the ecg machine is it is running at a speed of 25 mm per second and secondly my dear friend you just have to remember the size of the boxes and how many boxes are there in one big box in one big box there are five small boxes or five small boxes together make one big box right now if you look at a one small box if you look at this one small box over here what is the size of this one small box hanji guys what what is the size of this one small box what is the size of one small box can you please tell me in the chat box i am waiting for your replies what is the size of this one small box yeah okay so guys what is the size of this one small box yes it is absolutely right guys it is 1 mm it is 1 mm do remember this thing very very important very very important the size of the one small box is 1 mm do remember this thing what do you have to remember one small box 1 mm so now my second question come to you that what will be the size of a one big box simply one big box has how many small boxes five so it means 1 2 3 4 5 the size of a one big box size of one big box will be beta 5 mm simple yes or no yes or no okay ji now let's calculate the time how you have to calculate the time let's calculate the time of each box time of each box so we have discussed that one big box one big box have how much size 5 millimeter so what will be the time so what will be the time very simple 1 minute is equal to how many seconds 60 seconds 60 second we know this thing right so what we are going to do is we are just going to multiply 60 into 5 that will be 300 boxes in 1 minute that we have seen over here so this is the answer 300 boxes but this is not the answer over here i am just going to calculate over here time i repeat one big box has how much size 5 mm why 5 mm because we know that this one big box has how many small boxes one small box and each small box has a time of how much 1 mm 1 minute has how many seconds 60 seconds so 60 into 5 is equal to 300 boxes right so what we are going to do it's not just the time it is just that i am uh, answering my previous question or let's calculate over time so what we are going to do 60 divide by 300 and we are going to get the exact time that will be 0.2 second or if you want to know in millisecond there will be 
मिली सेकेंड इट विल बी टू हंड्रेड मिली सेकेंड सो गाइज अंडरलाइन दिस वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग ओवर हेयर दैट दिस इज द टाइम ऑफ वट इज दिस बेटा दिस इज वॉट दिस इज द टाइम ऑफ अ नॉर्मल बिग बॉक्स और अ वन बिग बॉक्स दिस इज द टाइम ऑफ वन बिग बॉक्स आई होप वी हैव मेड इट वेरी सिंपली फाइड ओवर हेयर राइट ओके now let's calculate about the time of a small box so now small box time so small box has how much time if this big box but not box big box has time of 0.2 seconds so what we are going to do over here 0.2 divide by how many uh, uh, small boxes are there in uh, big box 5 kitna beta 5 So zero point two divided by five, it is going to come. Yes, how much it is going to come? It is going to come zero point zero four second. Or if you want to learn in milliseconds, it is going to be forty millisecond. It is going to be a forty millisecond. Right? So simple, guys. Trust me. if you know this simple calculation mathematics ecg is going to be wonderful tool for you to solve so many questions and to diagnose so many critical things right let's quickly revise upon what we have learned till now over here we have learned about we were talking about the time and the speed over here first of all we know that what is the normal speed time of the ecg machine it runs at a standard speed of 25 mm per second kitna beta 25 mm per second ki speed se chalti hai we have seen this ecg over here and from this basic ecg we have learned that there are two type of boxes one we do have small boxes and one all these small boxes make one big box right like 1 2 3 4 5 these are the five small boxes and these five small boxes are going to make one big box what is the size of a one small box it is 1 mm so what will be the size of one big box it will be 5 mm then we have talked about the time of each box big box means 5 mm one minute has 60 seconds so 60 into 5 so how much beta 60 into 5 is equal to 300 boxes so what we are going to learn over here that 60 divided by 300 that time will come for one big box so one big box has how much time 0.2 seconds or 200 milli seconds so small box we know how many small boxes are there in one big box there are five uh, small boxes and what is the standard time of one big box 0.2 seconds so 0.2 divided by 5 is equal to 0.4 seconds this will be the time for what beta one small box this will be the time for one small box i hope i am clear if there is any queries any question please do let me know okay right okay ji guys i do have a question in the below given ecg what is the time duration of pr interval ha ji can you please tell me what is the time duration of this pr interval let's talk about this thing guys 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 i'm just replying upon the chat box just um, give me a second okay so let's talk about some basic question they have asked upon this thing right so what is the time given in this pr interval now we have to revise our basic knowledge over here 
from where this p r interval start basically my dear friend this you have to learn this thing p r interval means this from the start of the p wave to the start of the r to the start of the r if i let me go back to this uh, you know uh, basic ecg diagram over here we have spoke about this we have spoken about this p r interval why i am focusing upon prior to p p is um, you know uh, a different concept uh, we need to have a, a long discussion upon the p way but just i am going to stick to the basics of this thing so i'm just going to emphasize upon the p r interval i will come to each and every wave individually but as of now just to make this lecture more simplified i am going to focus upon the pr first now pr means what beta pr starts from pr it starts it starts it's a start of p to start of q or let's say qrs complex right got my point so again i am focusing over here so it is starting from the start of the p to the start of the q or let's say it should now you must be wondering that sir naam to yahan pe r hai aap keh rahe ho ki q hai see uh, basic literature says that when the ecg was discovered this amplitude of the r wave was on a higher side so it was easily visible uh, uh, visualized so uh, the people who invented the ecg they gave it as r name no much more scientific uh, discussion upon this thing this is a basic fundamental over here that you just have to remember over here that it starts from the p to the start of the q wave now if i am saying that it start from the p to the start of the q wave then there must be some electrical activity or some muscular activity in the heart which has occurred and that electrical activity got recorded upon that ecg so what does it means what is this epr interval means this pr interval means it is the time taken or time taken for the current or the excitation to spread from where beta we have discussed earlier also from the sa node हां जी एस ए नोड थ्रू ए वी नोड टू यस माई डियर फ्रेंड टू यस कैन यू प्लीज टेल मी हां जी हां जी टू या एस ए नोड और यू कैन से एट्रियल नोड फ्रॉम एस ए नोड टू एट्रियल नोड टू ए वी नोड एट्रियल नोड और ए वी नोड वे एट्रियो वेंट्रिकुलर no right my question to you is this how many boxes are represented how many boxes how many boxes are represented are represented by pr interval how many boxes are represented by this pr interval haan ji guys now let's calculate very simply over here let's calculate one box two box three box and four box one box two box three four and four box so how many boxes three two four big boxes or small boxes small boxes are represented by a pr interval right three to four small boxes are represented by a pr interval now we have that basic mathematical knowledge of the time duration over here of the small boxes over here now can you please calculate me what is the actual time of the pr interval haan ji can you please tell me now what is the time of pr interval you have to tell me i am waiting for your replies i have told you three to four small boxes and we have also discussed about the time here is the time 0.4 second of a small box and here is the time of the big box 0.2 second so what you have to do you just have to multiply the thing over here so if it is going to take three boxes let's say 3 into 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 0.04 
four. Three, what I have taken? Three, I have taken like this thing that this is a normal physiological, or let's say maybe it is four also. So if it is four, then we are just going to multiply zero point zero four, or if it is three, then it is going to come how much? One hundred twenty milliseconds. It is going to come one hundred twenty milliseconds or one hundred sixty milliseconds. So this is the normal time duration of the PR interval. Got my point? Very important point. Very very important point. So this is the time of the normal PR interval. Please, guys, if something is not clear, do let me know. Till now, something is not clear, so that I can re-explain it to you. Right? If not, then I can proceed further. I am waiting here for thirty seconds, so that whatever the lag of the you know technical thing of the video thing, we can get covered. Any questions? Any queries? Till now. Okay, thank you. Now let's talk about what is the time duration of the QRS. QRS duration. What is the time of a QRS duration? G guys, can you please tell me what is the time duration of QRS and what does this QRS duration represents? We have discussed earlier also. So this QRS duration is representing the depolarization of the ventricles. so what in other words i am saying what is the time taken for the ventricles to get depolarized right depolarization of the ventricles so what does this qrs represent basically it represents the duration of the qrs complex or it shows how long the excitation has taken to spread through the ventricles in simplified manner what i am saying that the impulse which was started from the sa node now it has gone into the av node and from av node it has traveled down to the bundle of his and then into the purkinje fiber it means due to that impulse or due to that electrical activity there must be some contraction of the ventricles now for how long that excitation was there and for how long that ventricle was in a contraction phase that is being Uh, you know drawn up on the ecg paper and that ecg paper is going to represent as the qrs and from that qrs we can actually take the idea that this was the time taken by the impulse to contract the ventricle or in other words ventricular depolarization has occurred right now let's again see what is the boxes how many boxes does it takes qrs this qrs is going to take how many boxes let me clear this so to make it simplified over here this is qrs how many boxes it is going to take let's calculate this thing from where it is going to start ha ji so it is going to start from here and to the end of the s from the end of the s over here now beta you can actually calculate how many boxes are there just a second how many boxes are there in this you can see over here that one box two box and three boxes in this picture how many boxes you can see basically three boxes are there right approximately three boxes are there so normal time taken for the qrs is basically again three to four small boxes three to four small boxes how many small boxes beta three to four small boxes so what will be the time duration of or time taken for the qrs to develop yes very simplified so what we are going to see we will just calculate the number of the boxes multiply by yes beta how much 0.04 so 0.04 so it is going to come 0.12 second or let's say 120 milli second 120 milli second right 
to if number of boxes you have to calculate if it is 4 then obviously 4 into 0 0.04 it is will be 0 0.16 second or 160 millisecond will be the time average time is 120 to 160 milliseconds right what we have learned till now we have learned how to identify the p wave right and how to sorry how to identify the rhythm the rhythm is best seen in the p wave right we have learned this then what does this pr interval means what does this qrs means right this we have learned over here okay ji. now let's see about the now guys in this ecg i request all of you to please tell me what is the time of the pr interval let's do some a little bit of practice can you please tell me what is the time of an pr interval over here you have 40 seconds to answer me i can zoom it please calculate me the time of pr interval in this ecg Thirty seconds left, guys. Listen, Babu. I request you to please tell me uh, how many small boxes. Okay, time's up. So let's calculate about this thing over here. I have told you that how to calculate the PR very simple from the start of the P to the start of the Q wave. So here it is getting started over here from here and here is the Q starting over here. We just have to calculate the number of boxes. So one, two, three, four boxes are there. Right. One, let me erase it and let me take a... Uh, simple pen so from here it was starting so one box two box three box and four box so there are how many boxes there are four small boxes four small boxes over there right there are four small boxes so what i have to do 4 into 0 0.04 so what will be the time 0 0.16 seconds how much will be the time beta? This much will be the time. 0 0.16 seconds will be the time or let's say 160 milliseconds will be the time over here. Right? 160 milliseconds will be the time over here for uh, this PR interval. Right? Now in this same ECG, second question is how much is the QRS duration? What is the QRS duration in this ECG? Again, please calculate me this QRS duration. Can you please calculate me this QRS duration? Yes, guys, 10 seconds left. 
again guys we know how much is the qrs duration over here very simply over here that it is going to cover three to four small boxes right so what you are going to see over here so you have to just qrs from the start of the queue to the end of the s wave how many boxes one box two box and three box approximately three and a half boxes over here so just simplify it over here if you have to learn about the qrs duration then you have to think about three boxes into 0 0.04 it is going to be 0 0.12 second or 120 millisecond right that what we have learned over here also the simple thing so i hope that you have uh, seen uh, learned this thing very importantly over here right we have learned a very important thing over here that how we have to calculate the basic things over here it is we are just going to run a basic ecg series where you are just going to be the part of the basic interpretation of the ecgs guys see ecg is not that easy how much you understand but yes with a repeated revision and a, with a conceptual approach ecg is simplified it is that easy trust me that uh, when i was a student i think the time i will complete my post graduation and will uh, come into my clinical practice there will be so many tools that uh, i may not read um, uh, i may not have to read the ecg but trust me ecg is such a wonderful thing that if you learn this by heart and if you give a little bit of dedication and time to this um, topic or this um, you know uh, tool cardiology is going to be very easy for you you can make a lot of diagnosis and you can save a lot of lives so guys this was for today uh, 